Okay. Good morning, Sabbath School class. We are glad for the ones attending here and the ones who are attending at home. And this week we have a very important lesson, uh, the Sabbath and the covenant. So let's begin with prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity on this Sabbath day, beautiful day, to study about the Sabbath. Pray that you will bless and guide our discussion through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, so this lesson, of course, this quarter, we're focusing on the covenant. There's the eternal covenant. There's several covenants the lesson has brought out. But now we're talking about the Sabbath as a sign of the covenant. Is the Sabbath a sign of the everlasting covenant, or was it a temporary sign of the covenant with Israel? What do you think? Okay. Everlasting. Okay, so uh, we don't have a microphone in the audience, but uh, but uh, we have a comment, and that is that the Sabbath is part of the Ten Commandments, and of course the Ten Commandments are central to the covenant, the everlasting covenant. So our lesson goes through some of the support that the Bible has for the Sabbath, the origins of the Sabbath and all. Today I'm going to play the devil's advocate and you all who actually believe in the Sabbath. I'm going to pick your brains and you have to convince me. Uh, so my first comment is the Sabbath uh, was given in the law at Sinai. That was a long time after creation given to the Jews. And uh, so I, it just seems to me that the Sabbath... Uh, was made for the Jews somehow. It was. It was? It was, but it was not only made for the Jews. Keep your mic up there, brother. I guess Stanley. you need to hear me, don't you? Yes. The Sabbath was, was, was made for man. And we are men, the Jews are men, the Gentiles are men, and... No women? Included. And women okay. are included in that and so the sabbath was instituted at creation not with the jews at sinai it was from the beginning of, of time when god rested on the seventh day well as i read through the creation account i don't see any command that we have to keep the sabbath where do you get this <laughs> Okay, someone want to repeat what our brother in the congregation is saying. So Victor said that this, the commandment comes from the Father himself. George, I'm not sure if we're on uh, Facebook. Yes, it is on. I, I'm not sure if the YouTube is on. I don't see that it's live at all, but Facebook is. Um, but the, um, And I think what Victor was talking about is in the fourth commandment, he said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And just because it wasn't until then that it was written down doesn't mean that the people did not keep it. Um, because as creation, you know, they, they remembered creation. And at the very start of creation, God instituted the Sabbath um, as a time to rest and a time to fellowship with him and, you know, and just, just rest, really. And so, um, so they continued to keep it. Um, as as they could, as they got you know uh, further and further down the generation, some of the people they forgot it. So that's why you know God had to put into the Ten Commandments. Remember, don't forget. <laughs> um, so if I'm hearing you right, the God's law, which we call the Ten Commandments, actually goes back farther than Sinai. Absolutely. What evidence do we have for that? Genesis. Genesis. Chapter two. Well, uh, Victor, we're, until we get a mic out there, we just have dead space. So. 
we welcome your comments online, and I'll, uh, I can always read that out as well. Okay, y'all haven't convinced me that the law came from the beginning. Uh, you got to work on that. Well, let's, let's look at it this way, Pastor. Uh, in the book of John chapter 1, uh, the Bible says, In the beginning was the Word. In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God. And he says, and the word was with God in John chapter 1, and the word was God. God is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He is not only, uh, he doesn't, al he, he has always had order and he's always had a law. The law of God, which was also in heaven before uh, Sinai, uh, and the, the, the Adam and Eve who, who broke God's law, Satan who broke God's law, uh, he went against God, thou shalt not have any other gods before me. He uh, tried to get the angels, a third of the angels to worship him. Well, uh, more than that, but he, God has always had rules and laws and, 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 and covenants. Uh, so when he gave them to Moses, he gave Moses what he had already instituted in heaven prior to, uh, prior to Sinai. Okay. Any other comments on the law existing before Sinai? Well, I mean, the two places that we see the law um, are in Exodus 20 and Deuteronomy. And um, in Exodus, it, like I said before, it, it um, references back to creation. And so creation is the beginning of everything. And so at that time, um, that's, when, that's when God instituted the Sabbath. Okay. Well, let me see if I can get out of my shoes of playing the devil's advocate and help a little bit here, okay? Let me, let me say uh, this. What, uh, what happened when Cain killed his brother? He, he violated the Was law. Was he in trouble? Yes. Yes, he was. <laughs> uh, I don't read anything before that. Thou shalt not kill. So does that imply that the law was there? Yes. Because mm -hmm. he ran, didn't he? He knew he'd done something wrong. Also, I read in the Bible, it says the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. And sin is the violation of the what? Law. Law. Did anyone uh, die between Adam and Moses? Everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Except Enoch. He walked with God. So if they died, that implies there was sin. And sin is the transgression of? The law. The law. So by doing a reverse, we can discover clearly in the Bible mm -hmm. the law existed from the beginning. Or Cain mm -hmm. wouldn't have gotten in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, when we talk about the Sabbath finally being written, they didn't need it written before, did they? No. Because mm -hmm. they lived so long and they had better brains than we do. And uh, writing had not been invented yet. Actually, it's interesting mm -hmm. that Moses lived during the era when the alphabet was invented. There mm -hmm. was hieroglyphics before. But what we call the Arabic uh, numerals actually started with Phoenicia. And, um, and Moses lived actually during the century when writing was invented by alphabet, not hieroglyphics. And so he was on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. And God had him write things for our benefit and for their benefit. So, uh, yeah. Because of sin... And because of the rebelliousness of the uh, children of Israel, God had to, he had to put something, um, as we say, written in stone. Mm -hmm. He had to put something down so they can visually see, they would know through, uh, through uh, God himself, Moses, and the word that was given to them. But they would have something that they could look at and say, that you know what, this is the law of God, and I see it. It's written down. We knew this. We knew that. But I see this. Honor your father and your mother. You know, thou shalt not kill. And in our hearts, 
because we have each been given a portion of the Holy Spirit when we were born, there are things that we know that are wrong. We just know that they are wrong from, from, from a child, even. And if we, uh, if we obey our parents and we focus on those things, we'll do the things that are right. But then again, there's also those specific things like, for instance, the Sabbath that God teaches us and tells us that he wants us to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy so we can know that he is our creator. He's our creator, God. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is. So we would know who he is. We would always remember who he was and not to serve other gods. So. Okay, you brought up an important word that mm -hmm. our lesson f also focused on. That's the word remember. Mm -hmm. uh, what all does this word take in? What did oh, God mean, good. remember the Sabbath? <laughs> that's a good Okay, from the audience, we have a comment that says that they had been in bondage for many years and uh, God was trying to recall to their memory things that had been important before. Um, Brother, Frank, Vic, Brother Victor is absolutely right. They had been in captivity for 400 plus years and uh, they had been exposed to idolatry. And during that period of time, you had some people that had forgotten and then during that 400 year period, you probably had some people that were born that had no knowledge of, they were just aware of what they had been subjected to, which was idolatry. idolatry. So one of the things that God wanted to do was to remind them what he had established during the creation week. Okay. Absolutely. And so those are the two actual examples that they use for the two um, recordings of the Ten Commandments was the, you know, re, uh, remember, you know, the Sabbath day to keep it, keep it holy. And then it, and in, Gen in Exodus, it goes back to creation. But in Deuteronomy, it actually talks about why we should remember God, because he was our deliverer. Amen. Okay, so he was our creator, and he's our redeemer, or deliverer. Mm -hmm. Those are two big reasons to keep the Sabbath. But back to this word, remember. The flood story takes several chapters in the Bible, and it's written chiastically. And there is a center point to the flood story. And I'm going to read this verse. This is the heart of the flood story. And the center of a chiasm shows why a story is there. Okay? Genesis chapter 8 and verse 1. But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle that were with him in the ark. God caused a wind to pass over the earth and the water subsided. When we use the word remember, we always revert to, uh, okay, we shouldn't forget. Mm -hmm. How is the word used here? God remembered. We know that God doesn't forget, right? So right. how was this word used? What did God, how, what does this refer to God doing here? Okay, reconsider a covenant he'd made with Noah. Anyone else? Well, the word remember, going back to just the word remember, implies that uh, there is something uh, that was already done before prior to remembering. So in order to remember, there would have to be something you're remembering that goes back prior to. So... Uh, for instance, in the uh, book of Hebrews chapter 4, the Bible says, uh, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. So if something remains, there, if there remaineth therefore a rest, then that means that it was put there prior to. So, uh, you know, if your mom told you to, as she told our, uh, me and my brothers, keep the tables clean don't forget, remember, don't, don't, don't forget. I want it to remain just like it is. So we had to keep it just like it was. And, she's, and, and she says, remember, don't, don't forget. And so we had to keep it just like 
she had it, otherwise we would be punished. So uh, God wants us to remember. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, there's more than one meaning for the word remember. And um, when it says God remembered Noah, it actually means God took action to do something about the salvation of Noah. So when it says remember the Sabbath, it doesn't just mean to call it back to mind, although that's part of it, but it means to take action. In other words, do something mm -hmm. about the Sabbath existence. The Sabbath made for us do something, take action. Mm -hmm. And so God is calling us mm -hmm. into engaging the Sabbath, keeping Amen. it holy. Mm -hmm. God remembered Noah not because God had forgotten Noah, but God rolled up his sleeves and said, okay, I'm going to preserve Noah throughout this flood and all the beasts that came into the ark. To remember in the biblical context means to take action. And Victor, I see your hand, but we're being t reminded that it's total dead space. Uh, what you could do is come on up here and we can hand you a mic whenever you... But when we, but before we retail, there's dead space. So if you want to just sit up here and stand and grab Stanley's mic when you no, have, have to get his comment, own mic, cause <laughs> that's going to work better. Okay, there's a mic. Grab. It's just it, that's why I said that, that he revisited it or reconsider in the fact that he went back to the covenant that he had made with Noah. And what that means is he, like he said, he took action from the point that needed to proceed from the events okay. that had to develop. Good. And that's what it means in the verse that you read in, in Genesis 8. That's what it means that he remembered. He need to, needed to continue that covenant, that deal that he had made with Noah. And to, to show us about his goodness and his faithfulness that he never lets go of us. Okay, thank you, Victor, for those mm -hmm. insights. And uh, one word that I heard com said here a couple times, and that is rest. Uh, when God was done with creation and he rested, was it because he was tired from all the work? What do we mean? What does this word rest mean? Go ahead. <laughs> Jamie's ready to jump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, rest, you know, rest, there is a component, you know, but in, in God's case, there, it wasn't because he was tired. But for us, there is a component of being tired, yes. But it's a rejuvenation, really. And so, and it's a, it's a revitalization. And so it's, it's to re, you know, rethink what is important in life. And, you know, and in the context of the Christian world, it's for us to reconnect all these re-words, right? You know, what reconnect with our creator and our deliverer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. 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 So rest uh, has the connotation of, uh, of um, reconnect, revive, and also it's a change from what we've been doing, right? Mm -hmm. So, for instance, the Sabbath is not exactly the same for every person. When I was a little boy, we used to go out to a home of some friends that lived on a farm. And uh, my best buddy, his dad was a farmer there. And he worked hard. They had watermelons and they had corn and, and he was a physical laborer. And on Sabbath, I remember he just liked to sit in the living room and try to read his Bible. He'd fall asleep sometimes. But then there are those who uh, work in an office in front of a computer all week. And when Sabbath comes, they can hardly wait to get up in the mountains and take a hike out in nature. So the refreshing part of the diversion from what we've been doing is going to vary from person to person as long as God is the center of our diversion. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yes, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Stanley, you had a comment. Uh, you know, in part, I believe resting from the cares of this world, not to put our uh, desires first on the Sabbath, but to uh, contemplate, meditate in whatever we do on the fact that Jesus is creator, Jesus is God. And this is why we, we, we go and we 
hike and we uh, focus on nature, the things that God has done for us during the week, and that we, we pray, we praise him, it, we treat the Sabbath as this, it, that, like, it's, like it's his birthday, in a sense, to where we focus on God and we give him, his, give him our time. And sometimes it's uh, uh, maybe even in our rest, we rest in, in knowing that he is our God. You know, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 that uh, 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 the apostle Paul, he said, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, meaning entering in Jesus' rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. In other words, don't come short of that. Entering into, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we, we which have believed and do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. So if God rested from his works, then we too should rest from, from our works. Okay, good. I always like it when Stanley starts quoting chapters in the Bible. That amazes me. Um, so the Bible says in three places, two in Exodus, I think Exodus 31, Ezekiel is it, chapter 20, that the Sabbath is a sign of sanctification. Mm. Tell me what sanctification is to start with. What does it mean to sanctify? Sanctify means to make holy. To make holy. So there's two parts of our salvation. One is justification mm -hmm. and one is sanctification. Mm -hmm. justification means that we are declared righteous because of Jesus sanctification is the process of making us righteous like mm -hmm. Jesus so how is the Sabbath a sign of the process of making us right if we keep the Sabbath the way that God intends us to keep it then it always keeps us in I mean his it always keeps the creator and the redeemer as you know as, as god um, in the forefront of our mind and if we if we always look at jesus and we use him as our model for which we live our lives then we will become you know um, a, and we accept his you know his his blood of course then we will become perfect as he is perfect okay so uh, you focused on keeping Jesus as the center, our eye on him. Um, is there a resting process in the process of sanctification? Is there a surrender and a rest, allowing God to work? Yes. Does that have any connection with the Sabbath rest? Yes. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I believe so. I think uh, the sanctification process is, is a part of uh, what God uh, wants us to do in order to draw us to to who he is and what he's done. He's, he, him being creator God. So sanctification uh, and then uh, uh, of course we are uh, um, justified you know, through faith and we are we, we are to sanctify his, his Sabbath, or he has sanctified his Sabbath, meaning that he has made it holy. And so if God has made it holy, then we are to, to keep it holy. And we can't make it holy, but we can keep it holy. And, and because, uh, you know, there was, there was a pastor that said, well, you know, I keep every day holy. Uh, and he's a very popular uh, mega church pastor and uh, I had spoken with some others that were studying it and I said well we can't keep a day holy that God didn't make holy we're not we're not that powerful we're not that majestic to be able to 
make a day holy. But if God makes it holy and he, he tells us to, to keep that day holy, then that's for us to do because he is God. So, uh, but the, the, the sanctification, he did that from the beginning. He sanctified and he made it holy and he, uh, he blessed it. Okay. Uh, a number of years ago, I was at a pastor's meeting uh, in a mega church independent, non-denominational megachurch. And just in this class that we had for four days were 2,000 pastors. The church was plenty big. Uh, it had an attendance of 20,000 on the weekend. And, uh, and so there was a question and answer period that uh, this lead pastor was conducting. And they had a unique program in that they worshiped on Wednesday and Thursday nights. That is, the believers came and they praised the Lord through song and they had scripture teaching. But on Sunday morning, they used that time evangelistically. That's when they invited their friends to church because that's what's in people's minds to go to church on Sunday. And that was a totally focused one-hour program which included some r really special music only one short congregational song and then a message that was very user-friendly so one of these pastors these 2,000 pastors and I was one of the many one of these raised his hand he said now you worship on Thursday and Wednesday night but you don't you don't worship on Sunday. He said, how, how do you reconcile that? And I'll never forget the lead pastor of this mega church. He said, well, there's Seventh-day Adventist preachers here today. If you want to know which day the Sabbath is, why don't you ask them? <laughs> and I thought that was pretty good. In other words, they didn't consider Sunday the Sabbath worship day. And they were worshiping during the week, and obviously we can worship God any time. But the Sabbath is special. Frank, uh, how many years ago did you discover the Sabbath? Probably about 13 years ago. 13. Yes. So what has the Sabbath meant to you since you uh, changed from what you were doing and then you adopted Sabbath-keeping? A Sabbath, you know, w what we're talking about here is a covenant. Okay. And a covenant is an agreement between two or more people. Part of that agreement requires obedience to certain terms. I see the Sabbath as being an obedient to the covenant. Mm. Mm. Okay. And the answer to your question was then I didn't understand. Well, I should say I misunderstood. It was only after God impressed upon me to be a, because I was going to a Sunday keeping church, that to be a Sunday school teacher that I started to read stuff for myself and started to ask questions. And in the process of asking those questions, I wasn't satisfied with the answers that I, receiving be that I was receiving because they weren't lining up with the Word of God. Okay. Uh, Victor. It has a question if you'll just Victor, get that the mic. mic over there. Mine's been uh, mine's been sanitized. Um, I like to direct perhaps to a very very important verse in the scripture that Put I know that I know that uh, some or many of us have overlooked. If we look carefully at the last verse on the first chapter of Genesis, that links us to the first verses of chapter 2 in Genesis, as to understand the observance of God on the seventh day. Okay, read those and show us what Which you're talking about. It tells us, it tells us here, and God, uh, and God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were of the sixth day. What are the things that are, came to my mind and my heart is even linking it 
to what our Lord and Savior, who was very strictly criticized for doing good on the Sabbath, is this verse in understanding that observing the Sabbath, it's about delighting in what the Lord helps us to do in life. Also considering what the Apostle Paul has told us, that whatsoever we do, do it to the glory of who? Not self, but God. And thus, when we come on in, remembrance, in remembrance on the Sabbath, we come together to rejoicefully tell the story that Jesus has done or inscribed in my heart throughout the week. And that is when I do things to the honor and his glory. It reminds me of the Sabbath, that he is a provider and my strength throughout the week. Hmm. Well, that's very special. Thank you. Frank, we need you to take your place again. Um, <clears throat> so let's consider the Sabbath as a sign of sanctification with another angle here, okay? Um, let's just remember the big picture. God had three choices. He could have destroyed the rebels when Lucifer and the angels rebelled. He could have reprogrammed their brains so they didn't rebel anymore. Or he could play out the situation to show who's actually right, which system works best. And so he created ground rules. You've heard me talk about this before. There's a time limit. God limits the devil and God limits himself to make it equal. So both sides are limited to influence. And here we are in the middle and we're in both sides. God's Holy Spirit and demonic spirits are pulling on our hearts. And as we yield to one side or the other, th whichever side it is, for instance, if we yield more to God, he has more uh, I don't like to use the word control, but more influence or permission in our lives. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And when we keep saying no to God and yes to the devil's ways, mm -hmm. he has more influence and he is actually the controller. And eventually, if we go too far, there's demonic possession. Mm -hmm. Okay. The way the Bible says that the Holy Spirit, this is Acts 5.32, the Holy Spirit is given to those who do what? Obey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of the Ten Commandments, the one that people find the most difficult to obey is mm -hmm. the Sabbath. The Sabbath. And you can look at society and recognize mm -hmm. that. The Sabbath is a sign of sanctification because those who choose to obey God all the way, not just nine, ten, tenths of the way but all the way God has a freer hand to sanctify them does that make sense right in other right. words mm -hmm. Sabbath keepers are actually if they are truly Sabbath keepers and mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about they know what day it is they go to church on Sabbath but they're mm -hmm. fully surrendered mm -hmm. God can do more in their lives in the process of sanctification than he can with others Right, right. Does that make sense? Amen. Yeah. You know, he, he emphasized that um, quite clearly in, in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 4, where he said, again, he, he says, again, he limited a certain day, saying, in David, and you know, we know David to be a God, a man after God's own heart. He said, in David, today, he says, today, today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. And this is what happened with Israel is that they hardened their hearts. They, they had uh, unbelief. And, and out of just refusing to accept and know that which was true that they understood, but they turned their backs on it. So there was a hardening process that happened with them. And Jesus said, and God says, harden not your hearts. He says, for if Jesus had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? You see. So then he says there, and here's the key, the, the, the part of that chapter that really sticks out is he says, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that hath entered into his rest, he also has ceased from 
his own works as God did from his. Okay, thank you. There remaineth a rest for the people of God. Mm-hmm. Now, um, the way I understand Paul in Colossians 2 is that when Jesus died and forgave our sins, he did away with the law. So we don't have to <laughs> worry about it. Is that? And, uh, straighten me out on this <laughs> if I'm wrong, but that's what I read. It says it was nailed to the cross. Doesn't that include the Sabbath? <laughs> Absolutely yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> These are <Sorry>. hotbed topics. <laughs> <laughs> it was a ceremonial law that was nailed to the cross, not right. uh, not the uh, Sabbath, the actual seventh day Sabbath. The ceremonial <coughs> law was nailed to the cross. Mm-hmm. Okay, let me find it here. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. It says, he canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us. Mm -hmm. Uh, What part of the ceremonial law was against us? There were ceremonial Sabbaths. And there there were decrees uh, that limited those. And so... Those were the, the things that were nailed to the cross, not the, not the Sabbath of the Ten Commandments. So not the, the f- ceremonial Sabbath. The ceremonial Sabbaths were just as what they're referring to. They were, they were, they were things that were done uh, during the, the months of, of the, every seventh month. Uh, some had Sabbaths during every so often they would have a Sabbath, and it didn't necessarily have to fall on, a, a, on, a, on the seventh day, if I'm not mistaken. But now, the reason why that the Sabbath is an everlasting covenant, because the book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 8 says that, or verse 7 says that the works of his hands are verity and judgment. All, all his commandments are sure. And then he says in verse 8, they stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and up and un, and uh, upright uprightness. So his commandments stand fast forever and ever. Okay. And that um, would be the works of his hands which wrote the 10 commandments. Pardon me. Take a mic if you want to comment. While Victor is coming up, I, you know, I always look at, you know, at what's happening in the future um, to guide me, you know, to guide me what to, you know, to do now. And if you look in Revelation, it still says that we're going to be worshiping God. You know, there's still going to be Sabbath, but there is no more of the killing of the, you know, of the, um, of the sacrifices or any of that stuff. Because when Jesus died on the cross, the curtain was torn in two. And so it, he, so he didn't get rid of the Sabbath. In fact, he kept the Sabbath after he died, but he didn't. You know, there, there afterwards was no other requirement that we had to do our da- you know, our sacrifices for atonement and stuff because Jesus okay. is our, blood, our lamb. So you're saying that the Ten Commandments did not end at the cross? No, absolutely not. You know, I've had people say to me that the Ten Commandments ended at the cross, and uh, in the New Testament. Um, they were reinstituted all but the Sabbath. (laughs) And so Jesus died and put an end to him, and then he reinstituted. My father had a conversation with a pastor of another denomination about this. He said, well, they ended at the cross. And then when they were reinstituted, only nine were reinstituted. And so my dad asked him, he said, well, when were they reinstituted? He said, well, at the cross. So he asked him, he said, you mean at the cross they were ended and then reinstituted? <laughs> yes. And then he finally showed my father the door. You had minister just a bunch of sticklers. You're sticklers. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but um, anyway, uh, B- Victor, before you get to your point, um, the... Um, Yes, Revelation, it says uh, that the remnant, those at the end, will be commandment keepers. 
Mm -hmm. We have all kinds of evidence the commandments are still in place, but let's fix this Colossians 2 before we go on. Mm -hmm. Because it says that these things that were done away at the cross were against us and hostile to us. People say, well, those yeah. are the laws of Moses. Where did Moses get his laws? Well, they weren't did he the, make they, them up? Yeah, no, they, they weren't the... Uh, the, the, the law of Moses was, were instructions given to Moses that, r that Moses wrote and put in a book. Which ones were hostile but, to but us? But those, the, the hostile um, uh, part of what, he's, what God is speaking of is, is it was when you sinned, you must go out and you must bring in a lamb or a goat or a cow or a sheep, something you can afford, a bird for those who were poor. And that had, there had to be blood. There had to be a, there had there had to be a blood sacrifice. There had to be death, and so that was against us. That was something that was very difficult, uh, but it had to take place in order to be forgiven for your okay, for sin. Okay, so you're saying the process was difficult, right? The process was hostile Dr. and against Bowman us. Dr. Bowman is ready to weigh in. He cannot help himself but to weigh in on this subject. Mm. It's our death decree. Okay. I mean, my, my eternal death, if I give it to God, has been placed on the cross. Awesome. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the ultimate mm. decree that's against me right. is eternal death. And I, I, I've, I've thought about this many, many times, and that's the only thing I can ultimately think about, and whether that's correct or not, but the ultimate thing that was nailed to the cross, it wasn't anything ceremonial it wasn't anything uh ten commandment wise it's my death decree okay it's your death decree it's everybody's death decree if we so choose to give it to god excellent i i like that and victor i still see you but i want to uh pastor uh dr bowman hit the nail on the head and the evidence is in the passage Let's look at verse 13. The last line or phrase of verse 13 says, having forgiven us all our transgressions, having canceled out certificate of debt again and so on, taken out of the way, nailed it to the cross, when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities. Now, what is, okay, rulers and authorities, according to Ephesians 6, is the devil, right? Mm -hmm. In high places. What does the devil do? He's called the what of the brother? Accuser. Accuser, because he remembers our sins. Mm -hmm. Jesus took our sins away and actually took away what the devil likes to use against us, right? Mm -hmm. So let's finish this. Uh, if I got a speeding ticket, and of course pastors never speed, but let's just imagine that my speedometer was broken and I got a ticket, and, uh, and I had to appear in court or pay the fine, and I decided to appear because I didn't have enough money. Um, on my record, it says that I violated the law, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what are the only two ways I have of getting rid of that record? Pay the you fine or find grace by the judge. Pay the fine or find grace by the judge. Let's see. And our mm -hmm. fine, our sins, we can't pay. So mm -hmm. Jesus nailed right. them to a cross. It says, mm -hmm. forgiven us our transgression, canceled out the certificate. The certificate represents my record. Mm -hmm. It isn't the ceremonial law, it's my record. Right. The connection with the ceremonial law, which comes in verses 16, 17, is because the temple and its services were actually a recording device of my sins. Mm -hmm. They yearly, they recorded it until the Day of Atonement. They were a process. Today we have computers that record things. They kept the records. But Jesus wiped away the debt, the Amen. records, Hallelujah. cleaned it all. And now there is no process, earthly process of recording those were merely a shadow of what was to come, mm -hmm. which was Christ. Mm -hmm. Right. So as you talk to other people who use this, mm -hmm. be careful not to say, oh, that's the laws of Moses, because 
there was never a law given to Moses or through Moses that's hostile to us. Mm -hmm. right. They were all good for us, mm -hmm. see? But what's hostile is my record. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My record's the only thing hostile. I wish I didn't have it, see? And Jesus erased it, and he took away everything the devil uses to accuse us. So he took away our damnation. He took away our death uh, certificate, mm -hmm. Victor. Now, and, and I, I beg forgiveness, but this is actually in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. It in his states, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twine one new man, so making peace. And so see that's, uh, and I even, I just wanted to add a little bit in what Brother Mike, uh, um, Mike Bowman has stated. It, 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 it seems that many, many, and sometimes some of us even forget that that's the essence of the cross. Jesus Christ taking my place, right. a place that I deserved. And as, as Paul has told us, he died that I may, I may live. And so without that, there's no, there's no essence of the cross. Okay. And so this is one of the things that it does, uh, what those... Uh, that was done in, in a way with at the cross, it was this burden that I couldn't. And that's one of the things that also we find, Pastor, that even in the, in the times of Moses, as to the experience of lifting up the a snake of bronze, that many have forgotten what the sacrifice really meant. And they saw it as a, doing the sacrifice in order for me to, dis, to, to get gifts from God. Hmm because I was obedient to it. And that's why even today, people tend to see it that way. Okay, I'm gonna be obedient to the commandments of God and so he's gonna bless me. And that's far from it, is to never see, yeah, lose sight of the centerpiece, of the center person, per se, better said, that is Jesus Christ. And okay. I found that in the, in the second commandment, so that's- Okay, thank you, Victor. Um, so the Sabbath is very special and Jesus healed people every day of the week the only time we find recorded in scripture where he asked someone if he could heal them or if they wanted to be healed was on the Sabbath we're all aware of that right mm -hmm. in other words Jesus deliberately broke man made Sabbath rules mm -hmm. to show what the Sabbath is really about mm -hmm. And man-made right. rules had piled on, so the Sabbath was a burden, and right. Jesus wanted to release. And he said that it's lawful to do burden. good on the Sabbath. Yeah. It, it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Okay. Um, I mean, he gave examples of that. He said, if a if a man's uh, uh, donkey fell in a ditch, would you not help him get it out? Uh, I mean. A man so, has a flat tire. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So uh, woman. We, we have to be open to being able to, uh, you know, understand what God was really, what Jesus was really doing, what he was saying uh, when he talked about uh, being lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Right. Um, you know, um, of course, I've held a number of evangelistic meetings, and I've had people for the first time in their lives accept the Sabbath. And they always ask, now, what is it I can't do? See? Mm, first thing. Uh, <laughs> when people first see the Sabbath, it's a list of things they can't do. But I've noticed a trend, and that is if people hang in there with the Sabbath, a year or two later, they're not talking about the Sabbath as a list of things they can't do, but freedom from the burdens and now an open door to what I can do. Mm-hmm. And that change has to happen because the Bible says in Psalm 46 and verse 10. Psalm 46 and verse 10 says, <laughs> Be still, I'm thinking in King James terms, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. And we always think, well, that means to be quiet. No. 
in the original, and New American Standard brings it closer to the original, it says, cease and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. Literally, it says, stop. Mm -hmm. How many of us would stop if we didn't have to? <laughs> have you ever thought of that? I'm kind right. of a workaholic, right. and if Friday sundown didn't mm -hmm. come, I wouldn't stop. See? Mm -hmm. But I come to a screeching halt, and sometimes I think, man, you know, I needed to finish this. And so right. it takes a while to get into the spirit of the Sabbath. And then I'm like, boy, this is nice. I don't have to work. <laughs> right. And now right. I can shift gears and do things that I've been looking forward to do. So we need to see the Sabbath mm -hmm. as uh, one of the greatest blessings. Amen. Because that's what it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay, our comment from the congregation was, um, it not only says stop, but behold. In other words, stop and look, stop and see, stop and think. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, when you drink from the stream, remember the stream. In other words, there's times in our lives when we need to stop and reflect. And the Sabbath is one of the best times for reflection. Share in, with in me in the last yeah. moments here mm -hmm. um, what you enjoy mm -hmm. about the Sabbath that helps you rest, refresh, uh, renew, uh, enjoy God. What types of things have you developed? Panel. Hmm. Well, it depends on what, you know, what's, what's been my cares over the week. And so... If it's been a lot of indoors, you know, and stuff, and you know, and it, the weather is nice, it's nice to go out into nature because there's nothing else that that testifies of God's, you know, creative, you know, powers and His nature and His love. Um, if it's, you know, if it's something that, you know, I I have been, you know, devoid of, you know, being in His Word, then sometimes I will put on a sermon or, you know, or I'll, you know, I'll look in my Bible or, you know, or Ellen White's, you know, writings and read through it, and that to me is refreshing. Um, mm -hmm. If it's been, you know, devoid with my family, then, you know, then I try to do something with my family, you know, um, depending on what, you know, what they're doing. Um, it just kind of depends. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There are blessings that come along with keeping the Sabbath. Uh, you know, riding upon high places. Blessings from the Lord. Uh, you know, I, I think that the, 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 the Sabbath is, is uh, it's a sign. It is also um, a time of, 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 of reflection, of prayer, of study. There's so many great things happen on, on the Sabbath. I remember going over to your house playing with, with, with Ma and your dad <laughs> on Sabbath. Music. Know, the music. And, and, you know, so the Sabbath means a lot. It, it's not just a, a day. It's uh, it's it's God's day that He blessed. It's the only, it's the only day that He blessed. Of course, He made all the days, but He only blessed one. Mm. He only sanctified one. He only made one hallowed. He only hallowed one day. And I don't care if you make Sunday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, your Sabbath. It wasn't blessed by God. And you can't bless it. You can, you can, you can worship on it, but you, you didn't, it's not blessed. Only the Sabbath is the day that is blessed. So, you know, I thank God for the, for the Sabbath. Okay. And with Frank? me, it's uh, more time to study. More God's time word. to Amen. study. Study God's word. Okay, good. Um, when my son was in uh, high school, he went to a Christian high school, interdenominational, mm. um, really fine young people there and good teachers, Christian environment. But one day, me came, one day he came home and he said, Mom and Dad, he said, my friends don't have a Sabbath. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all went to church on Sunday, but in the sense of having a Sabbath, 
it dawned on him that they don't have it. Mm. You know, they go about their other stuff and like they're missing something great. To this day, he's a, a Sabbath keeper. And he makes sure that on those 24 hours, he, um, he does things that would include God and other people. And uh, so, yes, others, the first, the day was changed. And back in the old days, a few hundred years ago, they applied the rules of the fourth commandment to Sunday. Here in America, there were Sunday laws. And you couldn't play sports, you couldn't buy anything. There were many laws, and they're still on the books. But they had to do with the fact that people thought Sunday was Sabbath. But now, I mean, first it was to change it and then begin mm -hmm. to reduce its, uh, its value. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, of course, today there is no Sabbath other than those right. who recognize that the mm -hmm. Sabbath is still in place. You know, God knew that Satan would attempt to try to change his Sabbath. He knew this because he's, he's Alpha and Omega, right? He knew this. And, and so he, he tells us to, to not forget. He says, my son, forget not my law. I guess we're getting close to time to shut down. But let thine heart keep my commandments for length of days, those benefits, for length of days and long life. And peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and men. So there are benefits to keeping God's law, to keeping his Sabbath. Okay, that's a good note to end on. Frank, would you want to close with prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercy and your grace. Father, we thank you for helping us to understand the reasons and the purpose.